Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run on this week's Grandmaster Nightfall, which is the Inverted Spire. I'm doing it on Top Tree Voidwalker. I'm using the Hung Jury with Rapid Hit Explosive Payload with a minor spec on. That's actually adept, the adept I got from this run. Bottomless Grief is always the secondary perk from what it looks like. Truth Teller with Blinding Grenades. Anarchy, obviously because we're doing a Grandmaster, so... I mean, Breaching Clear and the Anarchy, why not? Grenade Launcher, Scavenger, double on the legs. Now I'm using War Mines to create. I've never used this before. And the grenade actually will produce, or has the ability to produce War Mine cells. So I've, I've bolstered with a couple of extra War Mine mods. So when I break War Mine cells, as you can see there, I will get my health back. Then I'll also give a burning effect onto anything that's hit by it. So... These two stats that I'm highlighting here are very important. Your recovery and your discipline. I like to go with about minimum of five mobility, minimum of four resilience, but I always like to go as high as possible with recovery and discipline, although I probably could get it higher. Arc resist is a must for this one. I would suggest this over any of the other resists. So, with Solstice being here, this is one of the challenges, this or Master, and with this being a relatively straightforward uh, GM, I figured I would do this as the guide, because obviously we're getting the the adept version of, of the hung jury, and to be fair, who doesn't want that? So I come up here, up to the left now, you see I'm just going to toss a grenade down into all those, I, I come up here because beforehand, you could run, as you can see there, that's that's what happened. You know, that's that's the proof there. For anybody that didn't know, not saying anybody wouldn't believe it, but that's it in practice. Getting a war mine cell from grenade kills. I think you've got to get like three or four to get a war mine cell. Beforehand, the insight terminus, you could you could piggyback off of other people's runs. You can't do that anymore, which actually adds a little bit more difficulty the start of this because beforehand you could come in and you would be at the back of someone else's run sometimes if you were coming in to do a master the ads would drop a lot quicker than they should have because they were still taking patrol level damage and you didn't score points here all that's changed now these ads will do whatever level you're on they will take and give that level's damage and you score points here so it takes a bit longer now not much longer, but a little bit longer just to get into the strike. Uh, I come up here. Now, sometimes there will be ads up here. That you'll have to drive right past here and kill them first. It's normally a couple of a couple of shanks and a vandal. And as you've seen right at the start, I killed uh, a drag that was over at the other side. Because if you don't, he'll just keep throwing grenades at you. And that's this first part uh, uh, done. Now I spiral across this, you don't have to, but the, if you do want to do it, I always hit that edge and then I boost right hard boost either right right uh, thumbstick, click on the right thumbstick or right shoulder. When you, the tip of your spiral is in line with that little right hand turn bit, that's when you know when to boost. So what we're going to do here, obviously we've got, obviously with it being a grandmaster, even though this is one of the simpler ones, you can't take it for granted because just when you think, oh, this is easy, something really weird will happen or strange or, you know, maybe not so much weird and strange as an uh, war mine cell for us, but just something you didn't expect, but that is enough to get you killed. So I am taking my time just a little bit, but more so, it's... I've done this a few with a few friends and clan members last night. And we failed as many times as we succeeded because people just didn't know how this strike works. And there was a couple of... Not, nobody was doing anything really bad. It was just they were doing things at the wrong time. And I kind of felt bad for them that we never got the GMs done. But I, I am noticing... Incre but maybe it's just, you know... Maybe it's just, uh, I don't know, lack of lack of knowledge or just rushing rushing through things or not learning how to do it. But the amount of people I play with or have seen do the, these things, they just, 
I'm in so much of a rush to get through it that they take really ridiculous uh, risks. Instead of doing it the way that you're supposed to do it, or, or at least playing it with the mechanics to your benefit. And that's that's what this guide is going to be. I'm going to kind of try and tell you how to play this with the mechanics in mind to make it a repeatable, easy run. So when you come in here, you'll have four snipers. Now, that, that, that first sniper that was up on top, if you don't kill him, he jumps over, he just appears on the other side. So get him killed, and that leaves you clear up here. Now we're going to try, I'm just creeping just to see... If this champion is looking at you, then you want to get him to shoot at you, and then move. Uh, if he's not looking at you, so so if he's looking at you, you get him to shoot his, he'll shoot his uh, tracking rockets. Just don't shoot at him, just let him, uh, sorry, put, put a couple of anarchy on him, and then back away and move to a different position. Uh, but if he's not looking at you, you can put the anarchy on him. And then, and then go after him. Now, this, the big dude here that we were just killing. If you do it the way I've just done it, you can, the, the snipers will take his shield down. Because match game is on, it's a grandmaster, and we don't have anything uh, arc. So, what I like to do is take one of these, one of these, uh, barriers down from over here because it can be not really tricky but just a little bit more tricky than I would like if you go over the other side and you've got two sniper barriers it's bad enough it's bad enough if one of them hits you uh, it, it's gonna kill you because we've got arc resist on but when you've got to dodge two people's shots eh, it's not so great so I like to take one of them uh, and then I can move over to the other side. Now that there, there are, there's there's a lot of champions in this area. Don't waste too much anarchy on on, on trying to call be the one on the right, even though he, they're not standing too far apart. He's a lot further away than 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 uh, than you could repeatably anticipate. I would think. So, what you want to do is take the one closest because the angle's pretty straight, so it really is, there's not a lot of dead ground. Then we can come over here, and we'll just wait for this champion to stop. We'll just put a couple on him, you see, obviously, reaching clear doing its job. Then I'm going to just toss a grenade, reload, and just wait for him to put his shield back up. Now, a cool thing about breaching clear is obviously it reloads your weapons. Uh, I've had plenty of uh, times, and I'm, I'm not, you know, a lot, I've noticed a lot of weird things since I come back from a holiday. As most of you know, I went away for a week, so that's why there hasn't been a lot going on. Uh, it just seems really weird since I come back. I've noticed that Breaching Clear doesn't proc nearly as much as it did before I went. There's plenty of times I'll hit an enemy and they'll get no Breaching Clear from it. Uh, and... The other thing you kind of have to be careful of, and I've heard, I've seen people put it on forums recently, and I've definitely had my own experiences with it, as an our warming cell, of not getting the stop from the unstoppables. Now, I had this before, and it turned out I didn't realise at the time. This was just, this is when it first came in. I didn't realise that the unstoppable shot from grenade launchers isn't, it do doesn't stay there indefinitely. You get a couple of seconds, and then the unstoppable shot goes away, and if it goes away, you obviously won't stop them if you hit them with a grenade launcher. I know this, and I'm still not getting the stops. Not not repeatedly. So, from up here, that's enough moaning about unstoppables. <laughs> from up here, uh, you want to take as many of these, all these goblins, all the goblins, and the unstoppable. Now, you want to take the unstoppable that's up top. You want to take him as kind of once you've took, uh, you know, the barriers. I'd probably then be looking at the unstoppable. And the reason for that is you don't want to forget he's there because the game doesn't count him when it's telling you it's, you know, it's you, you can go now. 
The unstoppable could be still hiding, or he could. And believe you and me, he does hide. I actually have had it happen to me. Sometimes he'll actually another weird thing that was happening. Sometimes he'll even this one that's down bottom will, for whatever reason, will teleport up top. So you want to take that that unstoppable out, and then just use your grenade, use your grenade launchers and your grenades to clear all the goblins. Once all the goblins are gone, you will get the press forward uh, caption as you can see there underneath the nightfall. Then you'll have these two champions down here. So take them from where I did. Just be very careful. The barriers, the cabal barriers, are a fire. They're horrible to play against. And then make sure you go and have a look. The ammo is a big thing in here. All right, you want to between moving between sections. So from moving from that combat area to the next combat area, you want to arrive at the next combat area. This is sounds, you know, this is going to sound pretty straightforward, like it's not really advice, it's just common sense. But you just want to make sure you arrive at the next combat area with as much ammunition as humanly possible. And the ammo that's most important is, well, it's all really important, but you really want to make sure you've got that energy ammo and anarchy ammo. Pre I think most people know that if you run out of ammo, the game will replenish your supplies from any ammunition that's left lying about within the activity. So even if it was at the start, that's why sometimes you'll have noticed, sometimes you'll get heavy when it replenishes, sometimes you won't, sometimes you'll get full, sometimes you won't. That's just how much ammunition you've left behind. So, again, just like in, in previous activities, these, these gladiators, they've got just about as much health as yellow bars, I think. Uh, don't waste, I, I was to start with, I was, uh, I was wasting a lot of ammo on these guys. If, if you, if you want, as you can see, you don't have to use Anarchy. Just get them down low. Now, for anybody that's thinking to themselves, you know, about the grenade launcher, the energy grenade launcher, the best thing to do is try to fire the grenade launchers in the direction that the enemy's walking in and they'll walk into the grenade you know the middle it's the same as the anarchy the middle line of your targeting of, of your site is roughly where you want to have you know when you're firing down when you're firing up i, I kind of i kind of use the middle as it's it's my center for aiming so you know if I'm guesstimating how high I've got to fire it to get it to go off range, I use that middle line of the three lines to get my bearing. That's where I aim from. So I'll maybe raise it a little bit more if I need to. I do the same thing with the anarchy. I use the middle line as, as my centering tool. So when you get here, you're going to have two barriers and an overload and just a void shielded uh, incendiary. Take... Be, I, I go up here because I have, I'm always a fan of, of high ground, always have been, because it, it gives you it gives you cover where there is none, because you can use the top of whatever you're a high ground in from. I take the barriers because the barriers are paying the backside because the, the, there is a sniper bat. I think I think I think they're both snipers here. I actually can't remember. I know I definitely know this one I'm taking is a sniper barrier. So maybe they both are. Uh, so I, I like to take them when when you're when you're wanting rid of. It's kind of a rule of thumb when you're wanting rid of a champion quickly. That's when you just bite the bullet and uh, and just stick two anarchy on. If you really want rid of them quickly, stick two on them and one on the ground, and that's the, you know, that's big damage. So the great thing about the anarchy is, and you'll have seen it. In, in action there as the anarchy will stop a champion right but if you stop him with the energy if you stop him with the truth teller which I, I would use because it's there is a little bit of arc there is a little bit of solar we've already seen one of the solar enemies and and we you know we allow we let the the barrier goblins take his shield down there's two more solar shielded enemies in this area after we practically after we clear it but if you put 
if you use your truth teller, the reason why we're using truth teller is because void, tons of void here. Uh, so if you put that on and you apply the buff with that, and then you put your uh, anarchy on, the anarchy lasts long enough to stop them again. So it's it's kind of it it kind of works that way as well. So what I'm gonna do is just try and stun them. You see there, when you when you proc your unstoppable, uh, you do get a timer. Uh, I think we get a war mine cell here, which is good. Be careful, because one of the one of the things is that uh, enemies throw more grenades. So once you've cleared that area of the ads, there's going to be a couple of ads there. You see there, the second but the 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 next barriers came out. So what I do is I take him from back here, right? And I just try and lob shots onto him from here. And just be ready for his shield break. And you see there I'm using the middle the middle line as as my, my centering tool. That's where the enemy is, and I'll raise it using using that uh using that middle to, to let me know where I need to raise it from. Now you'll have a couple of couple of ads there, you'll have two there, and then you'll have two in the exact same position to the right. So in front of the left hand kind of room, we'll call it the room. Uh, I'm gonna try and explode this barrel. Do a bit extra damage against these guys. I have got a minor spec on my my hung jury. There's the two over there, so I'm just gonna drop a grenade down on them. If I was being super prudent, I would have dropped a grenade, and then I would have stunned them. Uh, and that would have kept them in place inside the grenade. So I'm going to blow up this war mine cell just to make sure there's nothing else in there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack these rooms. You've got to be very careful because these ads do a lot of damage. So what we're doing is we're just trying to keep them blinded. So I can break the shield. So I've picked up some more heavy, some more energy. Blind him again, and then I'll put that another anarchy on. Let's get rid of him. Then we'll blind him again, and now just finish him off with the primary. Now, once we've cleared these two rooms, there's exactly the same amount of enemies in the second room. But I feel like the second room's slightly easier because you've got a better angle on it. After this section, for me, is the most difficult part of this GM. Which is when you teleport across and you're in kind of the circular room, it's the most difficult part because there's a lot that can go wrong. I'll just drop that unlucky there to break his shield. And then put that on him and then stun him. There's a lot that can go wrong with the same enemy. <laughs> It's almost the same enemy that can that can mess up the run. So what I'm going to do is, as, as I said before, you want to believe in the areas with as much uh, ammunition as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out these solar guys, and I know I've got heavy and special line about. So that's kind of what I like to do is blind, blind the boy. Blind this, this solar shielded guy and then drop an anarchy on him. And the anarchy will go through his shield. It'll just eat his shield away. Very easy when it works. You'll see with this next one, it doesn't always work. Sometimes when you blind them, they just go walkabouts. And it's really difficult to get a bead on them with the anarchy. And I used a lot more anarchy shots here than I would have liked. I'm just trying to create a line, so if he jumps away from my shots, you see there he just regen. I think he does this a few times. Just regenerates, and he hits pretty hard. He just regenerates, so I'm just going to try and drop that. The angle might have been slightly different as well. And you can see he's... just want to keep him blinded. Now, regenerates so quickly. So hopefully I'll come back towards the anarchy shot. She didn't. So 
I'm just going to drop my grenade, which he immediately jumped away from. Sometimes it just doesn't go according to plan. We eventually do get him, and and uh, I wasn't like super fast because you can see there when you hit him, the the, the shield really does get get a little bit of a melt. Uh, I wasn't like extremely fussed because I knew I had ammo lying about, but for some reason, well, it's not for some reason. I was standing up there. I accidentally picked up the heavy and the energy that I had on on the platform next to me. Now there is heavy and energy over in the other room, but I'm just checking everywhere else first because, like I said, you want to go into the next combat section with as much ammunition as possible. Now this next section, as I've said, for me was the most difficult. Because it's the first time you're kind of in close proximity to all the, the dangerous ads. So when you get over here, you can have an unstoppable up the top. And then you'll have a barrier below and an unstoppable below. You have to get rid of those. Right? The dogs aren't a big problem. You just have to get rid of everything else. So what I'm going to do is charge my grenade as I'm going over. Thor, immediately change to my Anarchy and stop the Unstoppable. And you can see here, we do quite a bit of damage and we kill nearly all the adds. In fact, we kill all the adds. And the Unstoppable took, from all of that, took a lot, a lot of damage. And then what we're going to do is, he's going to be firing at us. We're just going to use this strut. As we're covering, just keep manoeuvring around it. And we've got the stop. Now we get the finish. Now, I have to say, in this next section, I lucked out. Now, this will happen all the time. But you'll, I'll, I'll show you what I mean by luck out. So there, when, when you get here, there's two gladiators. And for those, as you see there, I'm just trying to lead it on to them. There's two gladiators and there's an, a, a, a barrier. You just So, what can be really difficult here is, because there's no radar, GM, you can come down here and, and, and the barrier, the barrier, you don't know where he's going to be, you don't know where the... the gladiators are it can be really bad what actually worked for me now this guy you can always damage him from up here it was the fact he stepped out that's where I lucked out he actually stepped out and was like basically give me the opportunity to take him down really easily if that doesn't work if you can't see him what I normally do is jump round here to the back I'm just looking for this gladiator I'm trying to stay airborne there he is and I'll blind him and then I'll hit him with a, an anarchy shot. I go to that pit strut just to the left of where I'm shooting at him. And, and it works just about every time. I'll, I'll glide there. I'm in cover. Once I land behind it, I'm in cover from the barrier. I'll just blow up that particular barrel. I'm in cover from the barrier. Then I can blind both the gladiators and put a... Put a... An anarchy on on them and that will kill them pretty quickly so this is this this got interesting this is the ad that nearly always kills me this champion yeah, we've got the stun on him and we've got the finish once you kill all the ads with guns so the legionaries the legionaries and the unstoppable. That's it. Now I'm just like kind of getting rid of the dogs. But if you jump up on top of one of these blast blast barriers, uh, you can you literally can stand up here and let the dogs just do their own thing. As you can see, I've activated the the teleport. I'm having a look to see if there's any ammo. There is a brick of heavy, but I, I know that there's still there's still dogs so as soon as the teleporter was active i am off grab the heavy and i'm off
And now the rest of it is basically, you know, this this is all very straightforward. Now we're just going to stand here. And as I've already said, when you when you put anarchy on an unstoppable, it it will stop him twice. You know, it will, it will stop him again, should I say? So now I'm just gonna. I don't want to give him the opportunity to get up here, so I took a chance because the snipers to the up to the right. So I literally just ran down, stopped him, and slid back. I could have let him come up to me. Uh. But I, I didn't really want to take the chance of anything going wrong. Because I felt like up to this point, it was a pretty decent run. So that's all the incendiaries. There's like three void incendiaries and an, and an unstoppable there. And then there's three snipers up to the top. I shoot the bar, the box, which because it's GM, do, isn't, isn't enough damage to kill them. But leaves them one shot. Now I'll pick up whatever ammo I can. Luckily, i got everything dropped for me here. So I'm going into the next area. With full special, full heavy, full primary. Now, in this next area, what you're going to have, you've seen my character is standing very static. It is called, in the trade, it is called a toilet break. It also gives me a chance to explain how we're going to do the next section. So, you're going to have some vo void incendiaries, you're going to have an unstoppable, uh, one or two phalanxes, and... Uh, high value target you're gonna have them just below us we're gonna take them from up top we're gonna leave ourselves with just the unstoppable and then we can go down and take out the unstoppable pretty easily then we've got three barriers to contend with at the drill section we're gonna try and take the higher ground and that allows us to take the the unstoppable uh, sorry the first barrier pretty easily the second two barriers aren't really that troublesome because they're not the sniper barriers they're just <clears throat> normal goblin barriers when when the barriers when those goblin barriers when, when they're the the hobgoblin barriers they can be because they're obviously the one hit snipe really hurts so they can be a little bit annoying and we've managed to get a couple of anarchy shots on there and we'll put another another shot there now unfortunately uh, the anarchy shot didn't happen, but that one did. Now we've just got the unstoppable, so we're going to take him. You can, I know where he is now because he's taking a little bit of tick damage from the anarchy. So, once we take this guy, then we're going to go down to where the drills are, and we're going to kind of, there's a little bit on the right, you get, you get a bit of a, you get a bit of a high ground, uh, angle on that barrier it's only the barrier that I'm worried about because he's the cabal barrier the other ones are uh, the vex barriers and then that's it so what we ideally what we're looking for here I'm just gonna finish him ideally what we're looking for here is to come out of this this area with full heavy heavy is the most important part at the boss now don't get me wrong you want as much energy as you can get now, to start with, I'm just going to toss a grenade down there. And then I'll blind that guy there so that he's not an issue. And then as you can see, the barrier's already shielded up. So I'm just going to put a couple of anarchy in his direction. And then just from this little angle here, I'll just drop another anarchy and an energy which reloads were, were a scout and this should be him gone it just makes taking this barrier so much simpler from here now I in the past have took him from ground level it is it's, it's not too bad taking him from there but because of the, the strike because it's a GM you don't really want to leave yourself in a position where you're in a one on one get gunfight with a cabal champion so I'll just put a little bit of damage on him and then we'll take out the the barrel which finishes him off. Now I'm kind of looking to see what other ads are about because we don't want to be taking shots from anywhere else when we're trying to take these two barriers. I'm going to leave that heavy. I completely bypassed it. 
so that sometimes these can be a nightmare. I did not expect that to happen, but I'm taking it because, as you've seen, I, I actually meant it. Of course I meant it. Uh, I bounced the grenade off the champion onto the phalanx and it killed the phalanx. So that's why I got so much of my grenade back. So now I'll just put another one. Now I know I've got quite a bit of heavy lying about. These two were a nightmare because they just, they just stood so close together. I know I've got two bricks of heavy. I still don't want to go crazy with the heavy, but I know that I'm not I'm not endangering myself by using heavy against these champions. Now, you, sometimes you will have some dogs lying about. You've got to be careful of that. I had a little look after, and uh, there was nothing close enough that I couldn't drop down, <clears throat> make it to the edge, the end of this section. <clears throat> with, you know, safely, without the dogs catching me. So I had a little look, decided I could go, and then it was cool. I didn't. I, I think I might have actually put my grenade down here as well. I think I see a, a dog down to the left. Yeah, there he is. So I just dropped that down there. Now, because I took an initial hit, because it got an in initial hit, that's why I got grenade ammo back. And that's us, we're at the boss. Now the boss, you, you're not, as a solo, you're not going to bake the boss. So don't try, because you'll just end up, you'll just end up dying. As a fire team, you could either one phase him up here or kill him on the next, next platform. But here, what, what you're wanting to do is just drop his health down. To, you just want to make him go to the next level. It's when you get to the, the level underneath here that then you're going to be thinking about how much damage you want to put on them. Because, well, obviously, I'm just going to use another anarchy shot. Obviously, uh, we're going to use my super here. And I want my super again at the bottom. So, I pre-grenade. And then I put an anarchy shot on, in the middle. I'm just going to put two more on him. And you see there, that's... I put one anarchy shot on the floor, two on him. Pre, pre kind of throw a grenade and super him. One energy grenade launcher and then two more anarchy. And that was enough to make him go. Sounds a lot, but it, you I mean, you literally can do that in no time at all. So what I'm doing here is, again, I'm pre-firing. And then I'll put my grenade. And then I'm just jumping up here enough to get some anarchy on them. I've still got 13. I'll put my rift down. And I, I just want to make sure he's getting some decent damage. I know I'm not going to need a lot of anarchy at the, down at the bottom. So I'm just just doing enough to get him to go. And now we're at the, we're at the bottom, which is, this is where kind of the only tactics that the boss really, really come into play. The boss will circle this area, right? So you come down, you've got these five, these five uh, goblins should get a war mine cell, and that's all the goblins dead. The boss will, I'll just put two on them. The boss will cycle this area, right? When he settles, which is almost back where he came from, when he settles, I'm just gonna grab this heavy. When he settles on a position, the ads will come out. Right? You want you want to make sure he's you don't want him to go headless and that's about halfway just under halfway through his So I'm really close there. It's 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 about I, I think it's like if I'd have done any more damage to him, he'd have went headless. Right? So now I'm 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 thinking about the ads. You can see there I keep getting blinded, and the reason why I'm getting blinded is because that is his attack. His attack blinds you. So, this is where the blinding grenade launcher comes in perfect. I'll keep it reloaded. I'll, even though it's got auto-loading, I'm not bothered. I've blinded that ad there. And now I'm going to use an anarchy. And, 
And there we've got one main cell. Which will clear those goblins. Uh, the reason why I got blinded by the boss's kind of attacks is like that is because I'm too close to the edge. Right, I'm too close to the wall and he's firing at the last place he's seen me. So now I'm giving him something else to look at. So I'm just going to drop that over there because there's, there's a few a few of those uh, harpies. Now luckily, now I thought I was going to have to waste a heap of anarchy here. And didn't have to because the explosions and the, the shared damage when that other harpy came over done the, done the business. Once you've take, taken the harpies and the ads that come across, now you could have used anarchy, just drop some traps in the middle and you know melt the ads that way. Uh, you're gonna have these ads over here. Be careful of the boss's attack. I'm trying to get myself in a position where. Uh, try and get myself in a position where it's easy enough to attack the ads without the boss getting too much of a view on me. You see, I, I knew he was going to attack, so I moved out the way. And now I'll just try and clear up some of these. Almost got my super, which is what I'm waiting for. The super will help us to... The, the super is going to be what we use to kill him. We'll put some anarchy on him. Put that debuff on him. So just blind that last. I think this is the last goblin. And there we go. I've got my super. So now I want to see where he is. I'm just going to go out here. Now the reason why I decided to go out is because his weapon was slightly behind the pillar. So I knew if I went out he couldn't shoot me anyway. Because where I was going, where he's standing now. He wouldn't be able to fire on me because his weapon's directly behind the pillar. So, I've put a couple of anarchy on him, put an energy grenade launcher on him, and then I fired my super, and it was all that was needed. I possibly could have got away with... Uh, I could have got away with doing it sooner, uh, because the actual and in, in the initial explosion from the... From the Nova Kilton without the trackers needed, but I just wanted to be sure that is that's the, the biggest piece of advice that anybody can give you for a solo GM is make sure when you're doing something, make sure you're positive, you're safe, and don't take too many chances. Thanks a lot for watching the video, guys. I hope this helps you with your Solstice Alma and your Hung Jury Farm, and I'll see you in the next video.